Are you ready yet? Let's find out. Before anything, welcome to the channel and please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already to get notified for future releases. Microsoft Flight Simulator made the announcement that it's going to be available for Windows 10 PCs on the 18th of August. This video is going to give you a good idea about what kind of a PC would be right for you. It would be divided into three areas that include budget PCs, medium budget PCs and high-end PCs. I can't wait to experience this amazing flight simulator. It is certain to have gorgeous graphics with the right PCs to run. Before diving deeper into what kind of PCs would be ideal for you, let's pull out the requirements. The minimum specifications would be to have a Ryzen 3 CPU, a Radeon RX 570 GPU as well as an 8GB RAM and a hard disk space of 150GB. And also not to forget a 5 Mbps bandwidth of internet. The recommended specifications are Ryzen 5 with 1500X with a Radeon RX 590 or an NVIDIA GTX 970 along with a 16 gig RAM, a hard disk space of 150 gigs and a bandwidth of 20 Mbps. And an ideal specification would be to either have an Intel i7-9800X or a Ryzen 7 Pro 2700X with a GPU NVIDIA RTX 2080 and of course to have a 50 Mbps bandwidth as a minimum. At the least you want the AMD Ryzen 3 1200 or the Intel i5-4460 processor combined with the Radeon RX 570 or a GTX NVIDIA 760 with at least 8 gigabits of RAM and 150 GB of storage. The storage might be a lot but with what Microsoft would offer based on the details and amazing scenery, this is definitely worth it. When it comes to low cost gaming PCs, an ideal PC would be starting off with a budget between $500 to $600. With a budget around $500, you can get a Ryzen 3 3100 processor that costs $99 on Amazon on top of a Gigabyte B550 motherboard that costs $95. On top of this, the RX 570 graphics card would be ideal which costs $130. An 8 gigabyte a desktop memory single stick that will cost $38 with a Western Digital's 500 gig M2 SSD could be a perfect option. All these specs with the NZXT's 510 mid tower as well as a Thermal Take Smart power supply can bag you around $500. To be specific, it'll be almost $550. The links to all these low cost budget parts that are required to build can be found under the description. When it comes to mid tier gaming, there are a few things to consider which would need a much more different approach towards choosing the right parts that can deliver a little better experience than the budget PC. The AMD Ryzen 5's 3600 costs right around $168 on Amazon combined with an Asus Dual GeForce RTX 2060 graphics card that costs about $410 on B&H on top of an Asus Prime X570 motherboard that's another $150, a Kingston 16 gig desktop memory single stick that costs $88 on Amazon with Western Digital's SN550 NVMe M2 SSD built under NZXT's H510 mid tower and powered by Thermal Take Tough Power DPS 750 watts power supply can cost around $1100. While this budget is double than the low end PC, this can offer a good value for you. Not only can you experience Microsoft Flight Simulator but other games too which are common. If you plan on having a 1080p graphics to expect under a single monitor, the low end budget would be right for you. But if you want to experience yourself with a 1440p and a 60hz monitor, this build would be ideal in this case. If you want to dwell yourself into a much more smoother experience that can offer ideal graphics on every bit and detail of a plane or a scenery or even performance for that matter, you can definitely try high-end gaming that would cost you around $2,000 or $2,200. With a combination of AMD Ryzen 9 3900 XT that costs $500 on Amazon paired with a liquid cooler that costs $150 connected to a high-end graphics card which is an RTX 2080 Super which costs $729. This would be a deal breaker for you to experience 4K graphics that's gonna cost you around $2,000 or $2,200. You can find the parts and the details on the description that include links to Amazon and various other websites 
Over the last week, I got a chance to build my own PC, which include an Intel Core i9-9900K processor combined with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Super on a MSI Z390 motherboard and a 32GB RAM, all built on a NZXT H510 mid-tower case, powered by EVGA 700W 80 plus bronze power supply. I felt this was a good package, and it costed me almost $1800. You can find the parts list for my PC under the description which takes you to pcpartpicker.com that breaks down all the components required to build this PC. My suggestion to you guys, go ahead and try building a PC on your own. It's a different experience. The satisfaction you get after building your own PC is quite different. Take a look at the list of pre-built PCs that range between $800 with specifications that include Ryzen 5 2600, GeForce GTX 1660 graphics card with a 500GB SSD and an 8GB RAM that could definitely serve slightly above minimum requirements. If you prefer to use your laptop, a good laptop would be Acer Predator Helios 300 which is designed as a gaming laptop. Priced at $1129 on Amazon, the specifications include Intel Core i7-9750 with a GeForce GTX of 1660Ti, 16GB of DDR as well as a 512GB SSD. This is quite a compatible solution if you travel a lot. One of the mid-range pre-built desktops would be the Skytech Gaming Computer PC Desktop priced at $1000 where the specifications include Ryzen 5 3600 with a GTX of 1660 Super and a 16 GB of DDR. This is definitely a good deal for mid-range desktops that would cover the recommended specifications from Microsoft Flight Simulator. When it comes to a high-end PC, the Omen by HP Obelisk Gaming Desktop would be a good choice. This costs around $2,000 that includes the 9th generation Intel Core i9-9900K processor with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Super with a 32GB RAM as well as a 1TB SSD. If you take a look at my list under PC parts list that's on this description, it pretty much matches the same except the only difference is that the SSD is 2TB on my case. The total cost was $1800 when it came to my PC. All in all, make sure you do your homework on getting the right PC because this is not a temporary solution for you to flight sim. Think of it as at least a 5 year solution where you can enjoy flight simming every day. Imagine yourself playing on a multiplayer mode with your friends. You should be able to experience the same thing as another person can experience and see that beauty and scenery on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Feel free to hit a thumbs up if you like this video. Go ahead and comment if you would like to. I'd love to hear more comments from you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more interesting videos. Have a good rest of the day and stay tuned.